Hello everyone and welcome back to Nunley Math. Today we're going to talk about the volume of spheres and we're going to do something just slightly different today. You will notice across the screen right now you will see one, two, three separate QR code links as well as some tiny URL links to three different teachers demonstrating for you um, where the volume of a sphere formula comes from. Now these teachers have done an excellent job explaining this, so rather than me going through and talking about it again, um, what I'm going to suggest to you is that you look up those videos and that you watch those videos before watching this one. They've done a tremendous job and I think um, when you watch their video it's going to help you understand why we use the formulas that we use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead and talk talk about the formulas themselves rather than demonstrating the truth of those formulas and then we'll see if we can simplify those formulas using a little bit of algebra to make them into um, what you might see as a formula in a textbook. So please go ahead and watch their videos first um, and then come back and take a look at this one and we'll try and tie up some loose ends for you. <clears throat> Hopefully you've already gone and watched those three demonstrations. I'm going to try and tie a bunch of loose ends together for you now. You will remember in a previous video that uh, Miss Osterwish uh, put onto her Facebook page that we referred to um, in our class that the volume of a cone is equal to one-third the volume of a cylinder with the same radius base and the same height. Miss Osterwish took a cone and she actually filled it with water and dumped it into a cylinder and, and she showed that uh, it takes three cones to fill a cylinder. And because of that, we say that a cone is one-third of a cylinder, or in this case, the volume of a cone is one-third the volume of a cylinder. Now, we know that the volume of a cylinder is pi times the radius squared times the height. Here again, this formula is uh, based on the idea that a cylinder is a bunch of circles stacked on top of one another. We have another video where we talk about that. We're not going to spend a great deal of time talking about that here today. Instead, we're going to talk about the fact that the volume of a sphere is twice the volume of a cone with the same radius base and the same height. You see, cylinders, cones, and spheres are all very much related to one another because if they are all based on the same circles, we can use the volume of one to find the volume of others. For example, up here we said the volume of a uh, cone was one-third the volume of a cylinder. Here we're saying that the volume of the sphere is two cones. Well, now that we know the volume of a cone, we can plug that formula in for volume of a cone, and we now have the volume of a sphere is 2 1 3rd pi r squared h's. I just grabbed that from up here, and we, we created this from what we already knew about cylinders. Now I'm going to use a little bit of fancy algebra and manipulate this just a little bit. For example, I know that the height of a sphere is the distance all the way across, and if it makes you feel better to go from bottom to top, you can do that. I know that the radius of a sphere is the distance from the center to the edge, which means the height of the sphere is the same as the diameter of that circle, or it's the same as two radiuses. So instead of using h for height, I'm going to replace that with two radiuses. The reason I want to do that is now instead of, instead of having a pi and a radius and a height, now I just have a pi and radius and radius. I've eliminated one of my variables. I've eliminated this h by replacing it with two r's. I'm going to use the associative property of multiplication that says if all you have is one long string of multiplication, it does not matter how you group those numbers together, you're going to get the exact same answer. And so I'm going to rewrite this without those blue parentheses. They are unnecessary because this is one long string of multiplication. That's the associative property. I'm then going to use the commutative property that says if you have one long string of multiplication, it doesn't matter what order you write those numbers in, they're always going to give you the exact same answer. And so I'm going to move this 2 way, way over here. 
So it's going to be grouped with these constants or numbers. Speaking of grouping, we did say the associative property says I can regroup these however I want. So I'm going to group my numbers together, leave my pi in the middle, and then I'm going to group my radiuses together. Why do I do that? Well, 2 times 2 times 1 third is 4 thirds. r squared times r is r cubed. And I can now write this as 4 thirds times pi times r cubed. These parentheses now don't have any operations inside of them, so we're not really doing anything, and we can get rid of them. And you get 4 thirds pi r cubed. This is the formula you're likely to read in a textbook about the volume of a sphere. I would not expect my students to go through and do all this algebra in order to derive this formula. Instead, I would expect my students to memorize this formula. However, it is a good exercise for us to realize that this formula doesn't just come from magic. It's not something that just pops out of nowhere. There is a reason behind it. And the reason is a sphere is two cones, and a cone is one-third of a cylinder. And so I just use a little substitution, then a little bit of algebraic manipulation to get my formula. The good news is that's the hard part and you don't even have to do that. Instead, if I were to give you a sphere and give you the radius, all I would expect my students to do is rewrite the original formula, use 3.14 for pi. Remember pi is an irrational number. 3.14 is an approximation of that. We always use 3.14 in my class to make sure that my students all get the same answers. It makes it easier when we're grading papers. If you type this into a calculator, please do not use the pi key. Use 3.14 because different calculators will handle pi to varying digits and it causes us all to get different solutions. So 4 thirds, replace the pi with 3.14, replace the radius that's given to us. All of that can be typed into your calculator in most cases giving you 904.32 cubic centimeters. Remember, we're using cubic centimeters because we're filling this shape with cubes. Filling the shape with cubes. A lot of people wonder how can you make cubes fit inside of a curved shape. It might be easier to think of them as cubes of water or take a cube of ice and melt it uh, because you're actually filling this with, uh, it's easier to think of this in terms of being filled with liquid. The one thing you do have to watch out for is that sometimes you will be given the diameter of the sphere instead of the radius. Just make sure when you plug your number into the formula, you're still using 3.14 for pi, but your radius is not 30. Your radius is the 15. Again, in most cases, you can just type that into the calculator and it's going to give you the volume in cubic inches. If your calculator is not capable of handling multiple functions, or if your calculator is, um, is, is unable to handle order of operations on its own, just make sure you do the 15 cubed first, hit your equal sign, then the times 3.14 and hit your equal sign, and then you could think of this as a times 4 divided by 3, and you could type that in. That's really it for today. Um, this was kind of a short lesson. The hard work was done in those other videos. If you skipped over those other videos, please take the time. Go back and watch them. Those teachers have done a great job explaining uh, or demonstrating that this, these are indeed the patterns that we're, we should be using. Hope that works out for you. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave me a comment in the comment section. Make sure you ring that bell to turn on notifications. And make sure you subscribe so you can receive all the new and exciting math coming from Nunley Math. Thanks a lot. You guys take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.